Hello again, it's Eugene Kim of Faster Than 20, and I'm here to talk about the third workout in my workout series, Staying Strategic. As a reminder, Staying Strategic is my program for leaders to stay clear and centered during times of overwhelm and stress, and it's a useful way both to develop your muscles for doing strategy, but it's also uh, a more impactful and a more lightweight way of basically strategic planning. And so I have a project in mind. It's very meta. In fact, my project is the launch and design and packaging of my workout programs, which I'm tentatively calling Collaboration Gym. And I just have a whole bunch of questions, some of which might be answered by the time you watch this video, but I'm actually in the process of trying to figure it out, which is why I'm doing these workouts in the first place. So the first two workouts were question dumping workouts, and they were literally basically time-bound uh, workouts where I sat down and I just dumped as many questions as I could that were top of mind for me onto a Google Doc, and I spent some time sorting them a little bit and scoring them and trying to answer as many as I could. But I didn't really organize the questions or try to make sense of the questions I was coming up with. So that's what today's workout is about. Today's workout is what I call the question sense-making workout. And literally all I'm doing is I'm taking all the questions that I had before and I'm organizing them so that hopefully I can start to see patterns, I can build on top of it, I can start to identify gaps, I can show it to other people to get their help, and I can just continue iterating and working on this strategy. Now, the first time I do the question sense make. Uh, sense making workout with other people, I often joke and call it my Google Docs 201 workout. And the reason for that is we kind of push Google Docs a little bit beyond what most people use it for. We use a lot of highlighting, we use two columns, we use emoji, we do a bunch of things that basically help us make a, a visually clear and compelling document that will help us organize our thinking and really identify hotspots to further develop. And some people aren't as proficient with Google Docs, and so sometimes this is a little bit of a struggle. But I think it's really useful and important for people to go through this struggle, because once you do, now you know how to use the tool, and now you can use the tool to your benefit. Um, so I'm not gonna say much more than that. I'm going to let my commentary over the sped up workout speak for itself. And yeah, I'm looking forward to hearing what you all think. Enjoy. The first time you do a sense-making workout, it generally takes between 45 minutes to an hour. As with my previous workouts, I'm speeding this up. So hopefully it'll take about uh, six or seven minutes to go through it. And you can see right from the start, um, I have two things open. Uh, the first tab is my question dumping journal from the last two workouts. And the other tab, which you'll see in a second, is a blank document that is going to contain the organized version of my questions. And here we go. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna just copy all of the questions and answers from my previous two workouts into the sense-making document. And you'll see this more clearly when I get back to the sense making document. I'll go ahead and close this tab because I don't need question dumping anymore. Um, the sense making document is different from the question dumping document in that it's two columns. That's just to fit more on a page basically. And what you see me doing here is I'm actually color coding the questions based on the certainty score. So you'll remember there's a, a one, two, three score based on how certain I am of the answer. And I'm kind of using a stoplight metaphor here, and I'm making questions where I've scored it a one, meaning that the, um, the answer is highly uncertain for me. I'm making those red questions that are two, I'm making yellow questions that are to three, I'm making it green. And the idea behind that is if you see a red question, stop. You need to take time and look at this and think about it. If you see a yellow question, slow down. If you see a green question, move on. You likely don't have to work on this. And I also did a little bit of cleanup. I got rid of the numerical scores because once you have it color-coded, you don't really need those. What I'm doing right now is I'm adding emojis 
to the questions. And basically the emoji scheme works like this. There are four basic questions you're trying to answer with strategy. It is where are you now? Where do you want to go and why? And how do you get there? And so I basically have emojis representing three of those four questions, the where are we now or the present oriented questions. For that, I use those little plant buds to mark a present oriented question. Future oriented, uh, future oriented question is a sunflower. You can see me pasting those right now. And then where or how do we want to get there uh, is it's a how it's a tactical question, it's a mechanical question and potentially a strategic question. And so I use a little walking emoji to designate that. Okay, so you can start to see that I'm already starting to notice categories and I'm starting to separate things and add, um, add labels. Um, these are just things that are occurring to me immediately as I review the questions. And as I'm going through this right now and as I'm moving around, I'm going to start to notice a few things. Let's see when this starts happening. So I'm moving, I'm still moving things around. And one thing you notice, so I've flipped back into the question dumping uh, journal here to check something out. Some of the questions sometimes are context free. And like in the course of question dumping, a follow-up question will naturally refer to the question asked right beforehand. And so when you move the questions around, you lose that context. So I basically had to go to the original document to remind myself of the context, and then I can clean up the question a little bit. Still moving things around. You can see I'm slowing down. Oh, that's interesting. Um, you can see me playing around with the names of the titles. That title of that section was, I want, I want, I want. This one I just added is, but I need. And this is really a technique I learned from uh, my colleague, Allison Lin. The idea is rather than just come up with bland, generic column titles or category titles, really take that extra effort to try and be a little um, more creative and a little bit more fun. And what happens is you actually enjoy reading those categories and looking at the documents. Sometimes if I see a whole bunch of generic kind of categories, um, you know, my eyes kind of glaze over, I get bored. So it, it's really worth the investment to try and be a little bit creative. And I really encourage other people when I'm facilitating these workouts to do the same. You can see there's a lot of back and forth. Things don't naturally fall into categories necessarily. Um, I'm moving things around, I'm retitling things, I'm moving them around again. You're not going to come up with the quote unquote perfect organizational scheme right from the start. And even at the end of the 45 minutes, you're not necessarily gonna come up with the perfect organizational scheme. So that's not the point. You're just gonna do your best and you're gonna come up with something and you're gonna keep returning to this document over and over again. And in the process of doing that, if you come up with something better or more useful, you'll reorganize accordingly. There you saw a little flash of a, a fun title, the money, 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 money. That's my business model question that I'm trying to figure out. Uh, here you see, um, I noticed a question that needed more clarification or, or refinement. So I went ahead and corrected the question. That's a big part of the sense-making process. And now you see, I'm just adding spaces that's just to make it easier for me to fill in the answers. So I'm going through, I'm still jumping around, moving questions around, creating more spacing, just a lot of organization that's happening. Don't skip this step. It is so important to do this. Okay, so what's happening here is I noticed I had a repeated question. I mentioned this in my last workout that I had actually come up with the same question and the same answer twice. And I noticed it in the process of doing sense making. So I actually just combined the two questions and answers. And it was pretty easy because I wrote almost the same text verbatim for the answer both times. And you can see I'm doing some more moving around here. Just a lot of adjustment. I really hope what's coming through here is that 
organization doesn't just naturally come to people. Like it's a process of iteration. You just keep moving things around until you either run out of time or until you come up with something that feels workable and it makes sense. And then you go from there. I think I'm almost done. Yep, I feel reasonably good. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a table of contents. And what that does is it shows sort of like the high level view of all of my different clusters. And you notice I looked at that high level view and I'm like, you know, I wanna tweak some of the language. That money, 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 money thing needed a little dash in the middle to remind me that it's about the song. And there you have it. This is the cluster that I ended up with after spending about 45 minutes organizing my thought. The categories were what do I want or what I want, my people, getting the word out. I have three design categories for the three kind of distinct aspects of my program, the workouts, the gym, and the community. The business model question, money, 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 money. Did I get the right number of monies? Anyway, and then my limits. So what are my boundaries? What are my resource boundaries? So this is an organizational scheme that I had no idea of prior to doing any of my question dumping, but now it kind of makes sense to me. And so what's going to happen over the next several workouts is I'm going to stay exclusively in this sense-making document, and I'm going to keep answering questions and asking new questions and reorganizing here. And as I come up with answers and as I explore more things, some of the scores of my questions are going to change. So I'm going to update the colors. And this is basically going to be a living document that more or less represents my strategy. So that was it, sense making. I hope that my sense making workout now makes more sense to you. And um, it's really one of my favorite workouts to do for a lot of reasons. Mainly it's because you can take a bunch of scattered, uh, really disorganized thinking and turn it into something that's really useful and powerful. I especially like watching other people do this workout because everybody's minds works differently and everybody makes sense of things in different ways. And oftentimes when people are doing strategy, they're given a framework that is provided by someone else, whether it's imposed by your boss or whether it's imposed by some high priced consultants or even a book. And it's so much more powerful when you have a chance to struggle on your own and come up with an organizational scheme that works best for you. So that's basically what the sense making workout is. As with the question dumping workout, the real value of the sense making workout occurs when you have a chance to repeat the exercise over and over again. So I'm gonna do this a few more times. I'm going to record this, of course, and I hope you get a sense of what I'm talking about in my upcoming videos. Thanks, and I'll see you soon.